So, the basic principle for translation scripting is like this. You have a button or a dial you want to use and something you want to control. But these two don't understand each other. In this example I have a note button for articulation control and an instrument that expects articulation control to be done using program change so they don't speak the same language. What I can do is add a script between these two endpoints translating the note commands to program change commands. I need to change the note button to send its commands to the script instead of to the instrument and configure the script to send its results to the instrument. If you need bidirectional communication, you need a second script that receives program change commands from the instrument, translates them to note commands and forwards these to the note button. And you need to change the note button to receive from the script instead of from the instrument. The content of the scripts will, of course, depend on the situation and the requirements of whatever you are communicating with. So let's look at some examples. This first example is a real life example from a user who had so many articulation commands that he ran out of notes to play with, which is a bit counterproductive. So the solution was to use program change commands for the articulation control instead. So let's look at the details for how such a solution would look like. Let's start at the instrument and work our way backwards. I have a synchron player configured to use program change for articulations. It will use program number from zero and up for the configured articulations. Next step in the chain is the script. I recommend configuring the scripts as simply as possible. And in this case, this meant taking the received note number and using the same program change number. The script uses the event reference to get the note number and use it as the program number, resulting in a one line script. In addition to keeping the script simple, this means that you can use the same numbers on both sides, which simplifies the configuration. On Stream Deck, I have four buttons for articulations for staccato, legato, sforzato and pizzicato. And these are configured for the staccato button is configured to send node 0. The legato button is configured to send node 2. Sforzato sends node 3 and pizzicato sends node 5. Bidirectional articulation control can be a bit tricky, especially if you are using Cubase or Nuendo. For some reason Steinberg has decided that instrument tracks should not be able to send MIDI. I don't know why. So if you want bidirectional control, you need to use MIDI tracks, as I have done here. And you need to configure MIDI sends to send to the MIDI port uh, used by the receiving script. And you need a receiving script that is equally simple. It, when it receives a program change command, it will send a note on command with the same note number as the received program number. So if I start a recording in Cubase and do some articulation changes, like that, stop the recording and play it back, you will have articulation control on both the instrument and on Stream Deck. I have configured the background scripts for these two scripts for the note to program change translation. And it's time to have a talk about the port assignments. 
the ports used by the buttons to communicate with the scripts can be normal MIDI ports. You can create MIDI ports in Loop MIDI or MIDI Studio and use those ports to communicate between the buttons and the scripts. There is a potential problem if you do that, since it is MIDI ports that are visible to everything in the system. If anything else, like your door for instance, listens to those ports, it may act on the commands sent. So in this case, the note commands sent by the buttons may be interpreted by my door and playing notes, which isn't the intended use for the commands. This is where the plugin internal ports come into play. The buttons are configured to use plugin internal ports for the communication to the sending and receiving scripts. And the scripts are configured to listen and send to the same internal ports and use, so to speak, the real MIDI ports to talk to the door. When using plugin internal ports, there is no risk that the door or anything else in your system will act on the commands because these ports do not exist outside the plugin. So Cubase or anything else will not see these ports and will not act on what you send on those ports. So that's the main reason for the existence of those ports. When you install the plugin or um, update to this version, the number of plugin internal ports is set to zero. So you need to change to whatever number of internal ports you need in this field. There is no limit to how many ports you can define, but I recommend not using more than you actually need because you will fill up the drop down list with internal ports if you use too many. In the following example, I have two Stream Deck dials that control two volume faders in Cubase. One fader is controlled with channel pressure and the other with pitch bend. I would say it's not the most logical way to configure Cubase, but this is how you do it if you have something that requires channel pressure or pitch bend. The dial for channel pressure uses control change while the dial for pitch bend is configured to use an RPN, since an RPN has the same value range as pitch bend. As with the previous example, I have two backend scripts that handle the translation. The sending script handles both commands. When a control change command is received, it will send a channel pressure command. And when an, an RPM command is received, it will send a pitch bend command. And the receiving script translates the other way around. So if I use the dials, I control the volume faders. And if I use the volume faders in Cubase, the dials are updated. That's all for this translation scripting guide. I hope the basic principles for translation scripting are crystal clear by now. But if not, please feel free to send me an email or use the forum for questions. Thanks for watching.